my talk today is about genetic entropy. And I'd like to just say a word about entropy. <clears throat> entropy is sometimes used in a very technical sense, and if you ask physicists to define it, they'll define it one way. And if you ask engineers to define it, they'll, they'll define it in a somewhat different way. If you talk to an information scientist, they'll define it in another way. But entropy is really a very simple concept. It is the universal tendency toward dissipation, degeneration, decay, and death. And it is uh, something that you don't need to read about in a book because we experience it every day. Sometimes we call it Murphy's Law, <laughs> okay? It's the universal tendency for things to go wrong. So if we buy a brand new car, we know that it will degenerate over time. And if in our home, we know that if we stop making repairs, it will very quickly uh, turn into, um, uh, it will very quickly break down. And in every aspect of our life, we know that we are struggling every day against this powerful force called entropy. So would it be surprising to learn that entropy applies to biological systems and that entropy applies to genetic systems. Of course, it should be obvious that entropy applies to living systems as well. So let's talk a little more about specifically human genetic entropy. Several decades ago, a very famous geneticist said that if the mutation rate was as high as one mutation per person per generation, that human extinction would be certain and that human degeneration would be certain. Well, now we have discovered, we've actually measured the human mutation rate. It's over 100 mutations per person, per generation. That means that each of you have 100 more mutations than your parents had. And that parents, you have transmitted that to your, your children, and uh, the children each have another 100 mutations. Every generation, 100 new mutations are added to the genome. And that's the lowest estimate. I, I believe the actual mutation rate is substantially higher than that. So by now, we have tens of thousands of bad mutations each. So let me just ask you, how many of you are mutant? <laughs> okay? We are all mutant. We are seriously mutant. Now, statistics show that 2 to 3% of all newborns have visible birth defects, a very high rate. And this is extremely tragic. But the 2 to 3% represents just the tip of the iceberg because most mutations are too subtle to show a distinct effect. It's like rust on your car. You don't see every atom as it rusts. It's only the accumulative effect of many rusted oxidized atoms that cause visible rust. So in terms of this genetic load that the human population is accumulating, uh, we have now uh, classified over 6,000 human Mendelian genetic diseases. And you have to understand, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. To have a Mendelian genetic disease means that there's a single gene like hemophilia that has a very strong and pronounced outward appearance, which we can then follow through generations and say, this is behaving like a Mendelian gene. So for every human genetic disease that has been classified, there are thousands or perhaps hundreds of thousands of genetic diseases that are too subtle to classify but are accumulating like rust on your car. Okay? So the human genetic uh, degeneration problem is enormous. And if you go to a human geneticist today, geneticist today uh, and ask them, is the human population genetically degenerating today? they will basically universally say yes. Now they would imagine that if we increase natural selection, we might be able to stop that. But what we're going to be learning today is that is not true. We can, we can rigorously show that natural selection cannot stop the mutation problem. So a very famous geneticist, uh, Dr. Crow, recently said, we are genetically inferior to caveman. He's a hardcore evolutionist. Um, so 
Human genetic entropy, as we look at our cultural traditions, you'll find that many, perhaps most cultures, have traditions of superior men of yore. Well, what does scripture tell us about this? If we look at the lifespan of the patriarchs after the flood, we can do a very interesting experiment with biblical data. And this is something that students and teachers might consider doing. You just go into the Old Testament and uh, plot the age of the patriarchs, starting with Noah and all his descendants, to see what happens to lifespan over time. This is what it looks like. So uh, the, first, uh, the first data point is Shem, and uh, then the descendants of Shem through Abraham, through Moses, through David, and the last dot is Jesus Christ. And what we see is the descendants of Noah display what in biology we would call a biological decay curve. Now, when I was a young Christian and not yet surrendered to the Word of God, I, looked, I read those chapters and I thought, these are crazy numbers. They must have just made these up. But look at the consistency of the data. If you were a writer of the Bible and wanted to dream up something like this, would you want to show a biological decay curve? No. It's there, and it's, it's, a, it's a revelation that Scripture has recorded biological degeneration. And so uh, there's a song I've, I've heard recently in our church, which um, I think is a beautiful song, and uh, Mark Hall has captured this problem in the song, Who Am I? And I'm just going to read you the chorus to that song, but it goes like this, I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling. You tell me who I am. I am yours. So, guys, this is kind of us, okay? The letters in our genome are, are um, kind of dissolving. They're, they're being scrambled by mutation. And as that happens, our body falls apart. And ladies, I'm afraid you're subject to the same problem. So this is a, a visual image of what happens to us with time, both as individuals and as a human race. So genetic entropy is everywhere we look. It is painfully obvious. It is the bad news. It speaks not of creation, but of the fall. It is perfectly in keeping with Scripture. It reveals our desperate need for a redeeming Savior. The good news is in the light of the bad news, and that is that we can have salvation through Jesus Christ. Again, just to affirm that Scripture strongly teaches genetic degeneration, let's read Psalm 102. They will perish, but you will endure, yes, they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will change them, and they will be changed. And in uh, Isaiah, for the heavens will vanish away like smoke. The earth will grow old like a garment, and those who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will not be abolished. All creation is wearing out. Hebrews. You, you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain, and they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up, and they will be changed. 